The media is full of alarming reports about youth vaping. You'd think the world as we know it was about to end. Young people are vaping, but what about those who have never smoked? This is the at-risk group, as they're exposed to potential new harms from vaping. Well, we looked at the evidence to find out about this, and in particular, how frequently are non-smoking youth vaping? Is vaping increasing smoking rates? What are the harms of youth vaping? And how common is nicotine dependence? And this is what we found. Firstly, frequent vaping by non-smoking youth is rare. Most vaping by adolescents who have never smoked is occasional and short term and is of little public health importance. Recent data isn't available in Australia, but in international surveys, generally less than 2% of young people who have never smoked vape frequently. Frequent vaping is defined as daily, weekly or 20 days or more in the last month, depending on the survey. This figure from England shows that only 1% of 11 to 15 year olds in England who have never smoked vape once or more weekly. Frequent vaping is largely confined to smokers and former smokers, and to them, vaping is likely to be beneficial. Secondly, vaping is not a gateway to smoking. There is no good evidence that vaping causes young people to take up regular smoking if they wouldn't have otherwise done so. In fact, the evidence suggests that vaping is diverting young people away from smoking and reducing smoking rates. As youth vaping has increased, the decline in youth smoking has accelerated in many Western countries, as this figure shows for the US. Even if there is a small gateway effect, it's outweighed by the much large, larger number moving from smoking to vaping. Thirdly, the known health effects of vaping in non-smokers are small. Most teens who vape but have never smoked vape infrequently, so their exposure to toxins is low, and the health effects so far appear to be small. Vaping can cause short-term effects such as throat irritation, cough and nausea, and nicotine dependence, which can cause short-term withdrawal symptoms but there's no evidence of clinically important respiratory symptoms from vaping or of an increased risk in asthma. Teens who smoke don't have significant differences in adulthood in IQ, educational achievement or cognitive function compared to those who've never smoked. So vaping is likely to do little harm. High doses of nicotine can harm the adolescent brain in rats and mice, uh, but there's no evidence of harm in humans. But there's no doubt that this little fella here shouldn't vape, and we're very certain about that. There may be harms from long-term vaping, and these need to be monitored, but these are likely to be small. Fourthly, nicotine dependence is rare. Vaping can cause nicotine dependence in a small minority of young people who've never smoked, but it hasn't created a new generation addicted to nicotine, as the media and certain politicians like to tell us. One large study in the US found that less than 4% of young people who'd vaped in the past 30 days but never smoked had signs of nicotine dependence. Nicotine dependence is largely concentrated in young people who have previously or currently smoked. Vaping policies in many countries is driven by an obsession with reducing these small and potential harms to youth. But it often discounts the substantial health benefits of vaping to their parents and grandparents. And we need to get that balance right. An overly restrictive regulatory approach to protect young people may reduce the access and appeal of vaping to adult smokers and is likely to lead to more adult smoking and overall do more harm. Regulations should consider both groups and focus on 
the overall public health benefit. Please read our article to find out more.